My name is Sharif Sammy Botros. You may also know me as Alpha Pro Mega, and I'm here to talk to you about Project Power Rush. It's a revolutionary game that's going to empower you to earn an income by playing while learning a university level education and having plenty of fun with your friends and family. At our Game Development Corporation, we're producing Project Power Rush. Power Rush is a mobile and PC game designed specifically to empower the players by offering them an income through a cryptocurrency that we've been developing. And it will educate them through the environment by allowing them to have practice opportunities to learn what they would naturally enact in real life but instead practice it in the simulation, mitigating any potential losses from mistakes and fortifying any muscle memory to ensure success in the future. So while the players are essentially learning from the game, getting a, a very uh, high level post-secondary education, if you will, level education through the game and earning a cryptocurrency, we're also going to be offering companies, businesses, the opportunity to use our digital real estate in the game to promote their brands. So let's say for example you produce uh, oil of oregano and you're a supplement company. Um, so let's let's use Holista for example. So Holista let's say would uh, uh, draw a contract with us that says for X amount of years they will have their brand used uh, in our game and we'll get you know their actual logo and so on put it on the product in the game so now the player can actually use it in the game and get a brand impression but it's a lot less annoying than a, a banner pop-up with that X which usually doesn't work and crashes your game and wants your credit card information big hassle um, this this is a loss a lot less intrusive and it's also more immersive so now when you actually see a car in the game and it has like a, a Mercedes-Benz logo or you know whatever it is um, you're gonna feel like, hey, this is more realistic rather than seeing uh, this is a ABC company logo, uh, which is usually what happens. You have, you, you'll have like a fake brand. Um, so we're increasing the immersion by capitalizing on the digital real estate in the game. And that way we can increase our income and offset uh, the negative experiences that most players have right now. Most uh, gamers end up overpaying for all kinds of things, whether it's DLC, expansions, uh, uh, skins, uh, recoloring of skins, like it's just, it's getting out of hand with how little they get in return for their money now. Um, and what we want to do is, is, is make the game less than a dollar, so it's really cheap, but we also want it to cost at least like one penny, so that uh, we have less, uh, you know, uh, toxic players in the community of the game, right? Because a lot of people don't respect the game if it's free. Like League of Legends, most toxic game was very free, right? With the illusion of free also. You gotta really earn your characters and uh, your runes and so on. So what you, the actual power in it, it's almost like you have to pay to win still, um, but it's, it's free. So to try and mitigate that, we're gonna charge as little as possible on that end. We'll offer subscriptions, uh, like an optional subscription. If let's say you like skins, so you can give us five bucks a month and you get uh, like two or four random skins a month. Uh, so this this helps support the game a little bit. Uh, if, if you're gonna buy skins anyway, this would be a good deal because normally they'd probably be like 10 bucks, 15 bucks each. Um, but we're also gonna make sure that we hire very talented individuals that make beautiful work, make you wanna spend that money on the skins anyway, uh, not have just a bunch of recoloring. Uh, and at the same time, we don't wanna have to go and charge people for DLC and stuff. I remember when games would have expansions that were free, <laughs> you know, or like really cheap, like 15 bucks. And it was like a real expansion. You get like two new classes and a whole new land and blah, 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 or two new areas, blah, 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 like, and, yeah, new mechanics. Like I remember when the Diablo 2 expansion came out, it actually like changed the game mechanics and it added all kinds of cool things like rune words. And it was actually really impressive. Um, but then most most game companies are like, like again, the same company I made uh, Diablo 2, which is Blizzard. Uh, they made Diablo 3 and it's worse. You know, Diablo 2 had eight players max. Diablo 3 has four, right? Diablo 2, 99 game, right? From 1999. 
had player versus player. The other three didn't. They just recently added a garbage version of player versus player. Right? So it's like, what happened to these companies, right? Well, they have the shareholders in charge. The creative guys who used to actually be in charge have, have, have completely lost control of the company or quit because it was too stressful. So what we want to do is, is, is give the players that experience that they're lacking, right? That emotional high, the dopamine hit, the sense of achievement, but also give them something that truly applies to their needs, whether it be more income through their cryptocurrency, education through the environment, and so on and so forth, right? The experience, you know, of socializing. And on top of it, we've made it so you can create your own faction or business or gang. You can be a good guy, you can be a bad guy. There's righteousness and criminality in the game. You can be an alien, you can be a robot. You have a lot of freedom to be diplomatic, which is a very hard skill to master because most people, if they fail at diplomacy, they don't really get a second chance, right? Um, while uh, in this game, <laughs> obviously because it's a game, you can, you can mess up all you want, it's okay, there's no harm done. And any characters that you do level up, um, you can go and sell them. So any time that you put in, we'll help you sell your characters, help you sell your uh, accounts, or just the items. We're gonna have a platform so that you have complete control over the account that you're investing your time in. Unlike games like World of Warcraft, for example, where they say they own the character and you're like borrowing it, so to speak, by paying $15.99 a month. We want you to feel like every minute that you put in the game, you can actually translate that into some sort of potential, whether it's outcome, education, and so on and so forth um, in the present and future. So yeah, hopefully we will have um, a playable beta by next year, sometime uh, 2020. Uh, it could have happened even sooner than that if we can score uh, a really decent amount of investment. Uh, I actually met with the CBC producers for Dragon's Den this month. They told me uh, next month they'll let me know uh, if, if, if we're accepted. Um, but they actually, they looked really intrigued. And they're like, wow, okay, this, this is a really cool story. Um, so hopefully, we, if, even if they just let us on just to hear our story, that's good enough because I'm pretty sure I, I could sell the dragons. Like, you know, this is, this is almost a no-brainer. We're making a game that's gonna earn st stupid amounts of money just from the digital real estate, right? Like I can say, I can have, you know, uh, Whole Foods in here, right? I can have Amazon in here, right? Like all these big brands would probably wanna put their name in the game, right? They'd probably pay a fortune just to keep it there. It's almost like, a, 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 you know, if you put a banner uh, on a website or if you put a billboard up in real life, but it's in the game. And the best part, about the game is we see the full environment. So Instagram and Twitter often have trouble proving that they got this many views, this much promotional success, right? When you pay the money for the ads. Uh, for us, it's gonna be super easy. Maybe like 11 players saw this, you know, 12,000 saw that. It happened at this time, blah, blah, blah. Here's how they reacted to it. These ones used your product. These ones used it wrong. <laughs> These ones used it right. It's so powerful. And for like, uh, like that holistic example I was using, oil of oregano, if you take more than four drops under your tongue every four hours, mm -hmm. you become uh, uh, sick because it's too toxic. So, so that's a very serious thing, right? Like it's a hard thing to balance if you don't know what you're doing. Um, if you have a fever and you take it, because it makes you overheat, it can actually hurt you, right? So that's actually, again, it's, it's a difficult thing to use. So you don't want to do that mistake in real life. Um, but there are other solutions. So like you could take olive leaf extract and that's another supplement that people can take like oil of oregano to make sure they never have a sick day. And that's amazing, right? That's another thing we want to push for is keep people, keeping people healthy so that they don't waste their days, you know, sitting at home feeling like crap and not being able to, to move or function or need somebody to make them soup and so on and so forth. Instead, they can go out and do what they want, whether it be earn money or, you know, have fun or whatever it is. So. I believe that through Project Power Rush, we'll be improving people's lives in so many ways, whether it be giving them more money in their bank account, you know, teaching them so they can live healthier uh, through all types of ways, or uh, you know, promoting businesses so, to help them grow. Everybody wins in this situation. I believe this platform is gonna be uh, incredibly dynamic to serve all of them.
I believe that uh, we're essentially biological machines, uh, uh, vehicles for supercomputers that are uh, capable of learning and adapting to anything. We have no uh, human nature, if you will. Uh, if we did, we'd still be cavemen. Uh, and uh, what we need to do is adapt to what's coming, which is a resource-based economy. Uh, through a resource-based economy, uh, you wouldn't need money, you wouldn't need militaries, you wouldn't need police, you wouldn't need courts. It's just everybody's collaborating, everybody's thriving, everybody's sharing everything like they share oxygen, right? Nobody meters your oxygen, nobody tells you you can have oxygen only in this country, right? And that's how everything is supposed to be, because we use resources. I don't shower with money, right? I don't drink money, but at the same time, um, we're the only animal who has fooled ourselves into using money, right? So that we can buy, sell, and share the heaven we exist in to get more money. And we're trading with ourselves, effectively. You're another me, I'm another you, right? We're all one. We're, we're existing in this awesome snow globe that's ever expanding. And we have this spaceship Earth, this beautiful shining marble spinning through space. And rather than taking care of it, the, the numbers are a third of the planet was destroyed in the 30 years between uh, 1980 and 2010. And uh, in the last 100 years, around 50% of the planet. So we've consumed, destroyed that much resources um, and uh, caused that much pollution. So we're almost riding on a Titanic as a whole planet and it's imperative that we change this course which is driven by profit because it's enticing us to generate garbage that ends up in landfills. It's more profitable for me to make something that is in China, which will probably waste time shipping it, pollute the planet shipping it, cause a lot more uh, pollution in China, which the pollution level has reached such a high level that to uh, 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 create a whole new color designation for the level of pollution they've reached there. And they have a screen, a giant TV screen in the city that uh, uses a camera from above the pollution to show what the sun looks like so that the screen under the pollution can show people the sun. That's how polluted it's become. Um, so in, it, it, while doing all this, we, we now make the garbage for as little as possible so that it's profitable, right? We gotta have profit for the shareholders. And so we design it um, for the uh, uh, lowest cost, which ends up being um, usually something that uh, is, is not even recyclable, right? To make it recyclable costs more money. So it ends up in a landfill, and it's usually after one use because it was like a dollar store item. So now you're just consuming our very limited finite resources just to keep uh, companies profitable. So we need to remove that incentive to be inefficient for profit. In fact, right now it's so bad, my car has to keep breaking down, my phone has to break down, so on and so forth, to have cyclical consumption through this planned obsolescence so that the companies can stay in business. The problem with that is, we don't have enough resources to sustain that forever. So while this might make sense on paper for in the financing department, because you know they're, they're, they're happy, they're, you know, accounting's all happy, you know, uh, it's, everybody's getting paid, right? But when you don't have the resources to continue eventually, there won't even be anybody to exist in accounting, so to speak. Right? Nobody's going to be alive if we have no resources or if the, the, the entire planet is consumed and or destroyed. So uh, through a resource-based economy, we can mitigate this. There's a genius called Jock Fresco, uh, and he was saying we need a resource-based economy back then. Uh, he actually lived through uh, the Great Depression. He, he, he had a, a, a real first-hand experience being like, wow, I need a bike. The bikes are in the store. And uh, there are other kids like me who want bikes, and there are more bikes for them. But none of us can actually get this because none of us have the money. 
right? And it used to be possible before the Depression. So he, he understood something was fundamentally wrong, but it took him years to, to actually come up with the concept of a resource-based economy. Um, unfortunately, at 101 years old, he actually just died, uh, I believe, last year. Um, which is a shame, but his project, the Venus Project, which he launched in 1995, um, uh, still continues in Venus, Flo Florida, which is a, a small uh, representation of a resource-based economy. He was living with like alligators and deer and stuff. I don't even know how he did it. And he had all these like uh, really uh, futuristic homes that he built, these uh, kind of like round uh, uh, domes and stuff. And he, he also like, he invented parts for like helicopters. He did all kinds of like like mega genius things. He, he he's, a, he's like a social engineer, industrial engineer. But anyway, um, what really impressed me is he managed to get on uh, the Zeitgeist Movement's uh, documentary, and the Zeitgeist Movement is huge. I'm I'm pretty sure they have a, at least 50 million, maybe even like 100 million members. Um, they probably have even more like unofficially. Um, which is amazing because I think I was actually like one of the first thousand to join back in like 2006, 2007, like way back. Um, and, I, and I was like, guys, one day we're, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna see, uh, it, you know, it, it's kind of like you were saying, people are no longer using the US dollar as much. Uh, and that's obviously because it's no longer backed by gold uh, and all these things. But um, exactly, the, the petrodollar, which uh, is, is backed by force and coercion and violence instead of what it should be, which is gold, <laughs> originally. Uh, but at least we have things like Bitcoin now, which is digital gold. And you have uh, blockchain is the most complementary uh, uh, technology you can have for something like a resource-based economy. So in a resource-based economy, what you need is to make sure, okay, if there's this much water here, or this much, uh, uh, you know, arable land that you can farm on, or whatever. You want to have uh, that data be very accurate around the planet, um, so that, let's say, an artificial intelligence can assist humans to say this is the most efficient way to maximize productivity and to be constructive and to, uh, you know, maximize and promote life the most for all creatures, not even just humans. Thank you guys for watching the video. I really hope you can support us because this project means everything to me and I believe it's going to make our world a better place for us all.